He has been called by many names. The Lawless One. The Beast. The Arch Deceiver. But most know him as the Antichrist. The most evil character in human history that will make Hitler and Stalin pale in comparison. He is at the crux of an apocalyptic vision of salvation and slaughter that millions of people share. 40 or 50 percent of Americans say they believe in key elements of the end time scenario, which includes the rise of the Antichrist. He is the central figure in the world's most popular doomsday prophecy, and some say they know his profile. If you're looking for the Antichrist, you look for somebody who's very attractive, very articulate, brilliant, um, someone who would know many languages. Above all, he represents a paradox. The Antichrist is pure evil, but true believers look for his coming with anticipation. The Antichrist is going to be an agent of destruction, of death, of worldwide catastrophe. And yet, in the apocalyptic communities, nothing is more looked forward to with jubilation and expectation than the emergence of this Antichrist. Whether fact or fiction, his role is clear. The Antichrist is Satan's human emissary on Earth. And some say signs of his work and presence are all around us. I believe that the Antichrist is very much alive right now in Europe somewhere. As you look at the Bible and you look at the news, it goes hand in hand. And to me, it's absolutely amazing. Ready or not, here he comes. But who is he? The Antichrist or a mass delusion? The end of the world. For many of us, it's overwhelming. Something we hope is far off on the horizon, beyond the scope of our lives. For others, the end may be more concrete. A growing fear that a catastrophic event, perhaps a nuclear war, will make the planet uninhabitable. But there is another group of tens of millions of Americans for whom signs of the Antichrist and the end of time are welcome. That's because they indicate the second coming of their God. These Christians share a very specific, prophetic, apocalyptic vision of the end that begins with a miracle called the rapture. In an instant, those who are true followers of Jesus Christ, what the Bible says, are born again, will be raptured, will be caught away into the heavens to meet Jesus in the air and will be taken to heaven. Imagine a, a huge percentage of the world just disappearing. If true believers disappear right out of their cars, their cars are going to crash. The planes are going to crash and boats are going to sink. You've got chaos. Once the rapture happens, the worst period in human history happens. The rapture sets the stage for the Antichrist, who will appear as a savior and stabilize a world in turmoil. But ultimately, those left behind will be subject to unimaginable horrors. People melting and their eyes melting and their, you know, faces being destroyed and, and them splitting up. That's in the prophecies. It's not going to be a pretty end to time. We are on a timeline of history. The world did begin. The world as we know it will end and there will be a transition. This agonizing transition is known to believers as the tribulation. It's part of a system of biblical interpretation called dispensationalism favored by some evangelicals and fundamentalists. According to this schema, there will be a seven-year period that culminates in unspeakable suffering, which will be dominated by Christ's evil opponent, the Antichrist. Starting in the 1830s all the way up to the present time, there's been a rather consistent teaching about the Antichrist. 
They believe that this would be a personification of evil, a kind of messiah of Satan, who would gain power at the end of the present historical age. He's unifying the world. There'll be a sort of a one world government and a world, one world currency and, and uh, a one world religion. And uh, God would then pour out horrible judgments on the earth against Antichrist, against his followers, and millions upon millions would be destroyed. There would be attempts to destroy Israel. The Battle of Armageddon would be an attempt. There's imagery there of the Valley of Megiddo filling to the height of a horse's bridle with blood for thousands of square miles. How close are we to this horrific vision of butchery and justice? Too close for comfort, according to those who believe the end is near. It just seems like we're hurtling headlong towards something. Are we closer to the end than any of us really thought? Can such dire prophecies be true or even partly true? Are they divinely inspired or fantasies that create their own unholy trail of terror and death? True or false, the roots of the Antichrist go all the way back to the beginning of recorded religion. The Christian notion of the Antichrist builds on the scriptures, which build on Assyrian and Akkadian texts from the region of modern Iraq at, at the time of Babylon. Uh, the great story is of Tiamat, the wicked, powerful serpent of the deeps. Like Satan, Tiamat rebels against the higher gods, but is defeated by Marduk, the patron deity of the city of Babylon. After slaying Tiamat, Marduk creates the universe out of sections of her body, a good whole made from evil parts. Hence we have the creation of order, the beginning of civilization. Other ancient religions had this same kind of blending of good and evil in their central characters. The god Pele is responsible for the volcano, but of course in Polynesia the volcano has some positive aspects. And so you get one god who becomes in charge of two things. American Indian cultures commonly uh, uh, speak of balances of things, uh, that uh, the same fire that uh, warms you can burn your hand. The Hindu goddess Kali is a particularly stark example of a god with a mixed nature. She has four arms, and two of them are holding, you might say, instruments of death. And the other hand on the bottom is a hand that is open like this, which means I'm giving you boons. She's the mistress of death and destruction and the giver of life and compassion. What we have is a fused uh, dynamic where many qualities are united in one figure, unlike what we're familiar with in the West, where it's all divided up. Some scholars believe it took the transition to monotheism to polarize good and evil. According to one view, key elements of this shift occurred around 600 BC in Persia, modern-day Iran, with the new religion called Zoroastrianism. And it would one day lead to the God versus Satan, Christ versus Antichrist opposition found in Christianity. That divided the world into good and evil, like a big cosmic boxing match. The prophet Zoroaster, also known as Zarathustra, declared that a single benevolent god known as Ahura Mazda reigned supreme. As soon as you establish that there is pure good, pure light, where has the darkness gone? It didn't disappear. According to Zoroaster, there was another force in the universe. He articulated the evil forces within the world as Angra Manu. And Angra Manu is attributed with all of the troublesome creatures within the world that can bring us plague and pestilence. Could Angra Mainyu be the precursor of the Antichrist? Scholars point out that Zoroaster articulated an end time scenario that's similar to what would appear in Christianity. 